Excel allows us to use different methods for achieving the same result. For instance, you can extract a record by using a VLOOKUP function, an XLOOKUP function, an INDEX function, or the little-known DGET function. So which one is easier? Which one is faster? And which one is shorter? I am Nabil Murad. In this tutorial, I compare between the VLOOKUP, the XLOOKUP, the INDEX, and the DGET functions in the same work situation. If speed of calculation is not an issue in a small list, then let me know your preference in a comment. And now, let's start the battle. In this worksheet, I have a list which shows the quantity sold for each month in each region. I also created a drop list in cell G2 from which I can select any month. So if I select the month of April, then the quantity sold for the month of April is highlighted by conditional formatting in the source list. What I would like to do is to extract all the numbers corresponding to the selected month. And I'm going to do that by using four different functions to compare between them. I start by selecting cell H5, and in H5 I'll be creating my first function, the popular function introduced in 1985, the VLOOKUP function. V stands for vertical, so I start by typing equal VLOOKUP, and then I hit the tab key. The first argument is the lookup value, which means, what are you looking for? I'm looking for the month of April. Then I click on April, and I lock it by hitting F4, because I have the intention of copying to the right. I type a comma to move to the next argument, table array which means, where do you look for this month? I look for this month in this entire table, and I start by selecting January, and I drag down and to the right. The lookup value must be in the left column of the table array. And because I have the intention of copying to the right, then I lock it by hitting F4. I type a comma, and now it asks me, from which column you need a return value? That's what we call the column index number. For the east region, I need a return value from column 2, then for the west, I need column 3, and so on. Instead of hard coding the number, I'm going to create a function that increments as I copy to the right, and this function is the columns function. The columns function counts how many columns you have between two selected columns. So if I type columns with an S, and then I hit the tab key, I need to select any two adjacent cells, whatever cells you like. I'm going to select these two cells. I close the bracket, and then I put my blinking cursor in the first cell reference, and I hit F4 to lock it. By doing this, I would have created what we call an expendable range, because when I drag to the right, the first reference is not changing, the second one is changing, and that returns an incremental number. I type a comma, and now we are in the last argument of the VLOOKUP function, range lookup, and this argument simply means, are you looking at an exact match or an approximate match? Exact means false, then I'm selecting false because I'm looking for an exact match. I hit the tab key, alternatively you could type zero, I close the bracket, and then I hit enter. I want to copy this function to the right, I was able to extract the quantities for the four regions corresponding to the month of April. There is a little issue with this function. If the order of regions is not identical to the source list, then in this case, I'll be getting a wrong result, and I'm going to show you that in a moment. After I talk about the second very popular dynamic array function introduced in August 2019, that's the XLOOKUP function. It's available in Office 365, so if I select cell H4, I'm going to create an XLOOKUP function. So I start by typing equal XLOOKUP, and I hit the tab key. What's your lookup value? What are you looking for? I'm looking for the month of April. And note, I'm not locking anything. There will be a problem later on, and I'll come back and change this. So I type a comma, 
And the second question is, where do you look for this month of April? What's your lookup array? My lookup array will be all the list of month and I'm just selecting the month from column A. Also, I'm not locking right now. Remember this. I type a comma and then it asks me, what's your return array? My return array depends upon the region. If I want a return value for the East region, I get it from column B. If I want a return value for the West region, I get it from column C. Then at this position, I need to create another XLOOKUP function. So I type XLOOKUP, I hit the tab key. What's your lookup value this time? It depends upon the region. I click on the month in cell H1. I type a comma and then what's your lookup array? Where do you look for this region? I look for this region in the original source list and I select all the regions from B1 to E1. No, I'm not locking anything yet. I type a comma and finally, what's your return array? I want a return value from any one of these columns. Then I select all the numbers. I close the bracket for the second XLOOKUP function and I close the bracket for the first XLOOKUP function. When I hit enter, I'm getting the right result. Can I copy this function to the right? This is a dynamic array function. It usually spills automatically to the adjacent cells, but because I have a nested XLOOKUP function, it doesn't spill automatically, and I will have to copy it manually. But I didn't lock any cell. Would it work? I click and drag, and look at this. It's returning the right result. I told you a moment ago that if the order of columns is not identical to the source list, the VLOOKUP function will have a problem and the XLOOKUP function as well will have the same problem. I have some drop list in row number one, so I'm going to switch the region by selecting a different region. Let's say I select West, and from the second one, I select the East region. I just switched the region. For the VLOOKUP function, I still get a result, but the result is incorrect, it's confusing. While the West region should be 522, and the East region should be 273. Look at the conditional formatting, highlighting the corresponding record in the source list. What about the XLOOKUP? The XLOOKUP is returning a not available error for the other months where I copied the function. How do I fix this problem? If the order of columns is not identical to the source list, then instead of the columns function, I need to use a match function in combination with the VLOOKUP function. So I'm selecting the first VLOOKUP function. I put it in the edit mode by hitting F2. And I want to replace this argument, the column index function. And I can simply select it in the screen tip. And I want to replace the columns function with a match function. So I type match and then I hit tab. What does the match function do? The match function will look at the region in H1 and it will match it in the header row of the source list. I'm not locking H1 because I'm not copying up and down. But when I copy right and left, I want it to increment and I leave it as a relative cell reference. I type a comma and where do you look for this month? What's your lookup array? My lookup array is the top row of the source list, and I start by selecting A1. So for the east, that's column number two. For the west, that's column number three. And for this argument, I need to lock it, then I hit F4, and then I type another comma. The last argument of the match function, I want an exact match, then I type zero, and I close the bracket. Should you wish to test, then select the argument in the screen tip column index number and then hit F9 to test it to see what this part of the function will be returning. I hit F9 and it says this is column number 3. That's correct. The West region is in the third column. Immediately, I hit Ctrl Z because we don't want to hard code numbers and I hit Ctrl Enter. Now, if I copy to the right, this function will work just fine. What about the XLOOKUP function? For the XLOOKUP function to work, all what I need to do is to lock the column references because I have a nested 
XLOOKUP function. Then I hit F2, and then I'll be locking G4 by hitting F4. I'll be locking the second argument, the lookup array, by hitting F4. I lock the lookup array for the second XLOOKUP function. I select it from the screen tip, I hit F4, and the return array in the second XLOOKUP function, I lock it by hitting F4. Now I hit enter. If I copy this function to the right, it will work just fine. Now let's bring back the original order of the regions in row number one. Then I select east and I select west. Everything is working fine with the VLOOKUP and the XLOOKUP function. I have a column that shows the length of the function I created. And after fixing the two functions, the VLOOKUP function has 53 characters and the XLOOKUP function has 58 characters. In each one of these functions, I used one helper function. Now let's move to the next function, the index function, a very popular function introduced in 1985 in Excel. So in cell H3, I type equal index and I hit the tab key. And the index function requires three arguments. Number one, where is the array from which you want to extract a number? Then I select all these numbers. And because I have the intention of copying to the right, I need to lock by hitting F4. I then type a comma from this array of number. Which number do you want? Well, I need the intersection of a row and a column. How do I provide the row number and the column number? For each one of these arguments, I need to use a match function. Let's start with the row. I type match, and then I hit tab. What would you like to match? Because in the row header, I have some month. Then I click on April, and I lock it by hitting F4. I type a comma. Then what's your lookup array? Where do you look for this month? I look for this month in column A, and then I lock it. I type comma zero for an exact match and I close the bracket. I type another comma and what's the column number? The column number requires another match function that looks at the region and matches the position of the region to return the column number to the index function. I type match, I hit the tab key. What's your lookup value? My lookup value is in cell H1. If you don't lock, there is no problem, so long as you are not copying up and down. I type another comma, and here it asks me about the lookup array. The lookup array will be the four regions I'm selecting from B1 to E1, and this one must be locked. I hit F4, comma 0 for the second exact match. I close the bracket for the second match, and I close the bracket for the index function. Should you wish to test, Click in the first match function, which provides the row number. And when I select it from the screen tip, if I hit F9 to test, it says April is in row number four. That's wonderful. Control Z. And then I want to test the second one. I click in the screen tip. I hit F9 and it says, well, the East region, that's column one of the table array. Control Z to undo. And then I hit enter. Now I want to copy this function to the right, and it's working just fine. Note, for the index function, I'm using two helper functions, the two match functions, and the length of this function is 65 characters. Now let's go to the last function, the dget function. D stands for database. I'm going to type equal dget. And because it's a database function, then the first argument, where is your database? Note, I'm going to select everything, including the column headers and row headers. I'm selecting the entire range from A1 to E13. I hit F4 to lock it. I then type a comma, and it asks me, what's the field you are looking for? In database terminology, column headers are called fields. And the field I'm looking for is the east. I click on H1 and there I type a comma and finally it asks me about a criteria. It asks me about a condition. The condition is in the month but here I need to select 
G1 and G2, I need to select the header row and the spelling must match exactly the source list. Then I click and drag to select G1 and G2. I need to lock them by hitting F4 and I'm done. I close the bracket, I hit enter, I get the right result, I can copy to the right. If I change the order of buns, all the functions will work just fine. Note the dget function didn't require any other helper function and is only 30 characters long. I showed you four functions that can deal with the same work situation. Let me know in a comment which one you prefer. And if you found value in this tutorial. Oops! Did I tell you that in a similar work situation, I won't use any of these functions? I will rather use a filter dynamic array function. Let me show you the function. I select cell H6 and I type equal filter and I hit tab. Where is the array you want to filter? I select all the numbers. Same selection like the index function, but in this case, I don't need to lock anything. I type a comma. What do you want to include? I want to include the selected month. I select all the months from column A and I say if it is equal to the month in column G, in cell G6, I close the bracket, I didn't use any helper function, I didn't have to lock anything, and the filter function didn't require any other helper functions. It's the shortest one, only 25 characters. I didn't have to lock and it spills to the adjacent cells. Let's exclude the filter function from the competition and vote for the winning function in a comment below this video. And if you found value in this tutorial, give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to my channel to be notified when your tutorials are released. The best is yet to come. Thanks for watching and see you next time.